For more than a decade, FTI has strived to become the leader in the aftermarket, performance, transmission, and converter industry. We've joined forces with McLeod Driveline Components under the leadership of Top Fuel Funny Car Pilot Paul Lee and now have a larger distribution network, more resources, and more power. Come see us in the pits and ask how you can join the FTI family. It's not cheating. It is the competitive edge. The number one source of friction in your engine is not what you think. Piston rings rubbing against the cylinder walls generate more friction than any other part of the engine. More friction and temperature means more wear and less horsepower. Fortunately, the team at Total Seal knows how to reduce friction and wear through innovative piston ring design. If it takes a piston, Total Seal can build a better ring. This is WFO Radio. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. WFO Radio back on the air. That's right. We've got NHRA Arizona Nationals winners. We're going to talk a little top fuel with Chad Head from Coletta Motorsports. Very exciting. Obviously, world champions, points leaders in both categories. Sean has won two out of three. JR has gotten a win. We're going to talk with Chad moments from now. And then Greg Anderson, the five-time champ, got it done. Three races, three winners in pro stock. And uh, Greg is out there in the desert. We are going to try to connect with Greg Anderson to talk a little bit about KB Titan and what's going on with the team. Dallas Glenn picking up the win out there at the Lucas Oil Winter Nationals as well. Those of you watching on PowerTube TV, welcome. You found PowerTube. That's awesome. All kinds of great content here on the show. Thank you for watching WFO Radio. We appreciate you. The winners. The biggest and the best from the world of NHRA Mission Foods Drag Racing. Join us each week. We're getting ready for the Vegas Four Wide Nationals. We'll have winners next week. So, you know, DVR, program, schedule, whatever you do on PowerTube TV, join us now. And uh, those of you out there on X, those of you watching on YouTube, we ask you to share the show. We're at noon on Wednesday, popping up out of nowhere. We need you guys to amplify the program because our next guest, he's getting ready to go uh, oversee four wide in Vegas from Coletta Motorsports. He joins us now, Mr. Chad Head. What's up, Chad? How are you? Hey, Joe. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm great, but uh, not as good as you guys must be feeling after this uh, hot start for Coletta Motorsports. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty cool, man. Uh, two out of three for Sean and Jared's won a race, and and Dougie's Dougie's car's coming around, and and um, yeah, we're we're obviously really really excited. Yeah, and. But not from like this wasn't due to lack of work, right? Like you guys have been totally focused on this outcome for the last, you know, three years for it to be coming together now. And uh, that's obviously the goal for Connie Coletta to show up at every race with a chance to win in both categories. You got that first double. Uh, a lot has gone into making this reality. Yeah, it's it's a big group effort, obviously. I mean, it's it's not just one person. Um, both top fuel teams uh, walked in the shop and didn't know anybody. You would have known who worked on what team. Everybody worked together, built new cars. Uh, obviously, some new new uh, new people. Um, so it's pretty exciting. And the funny car, same thing with the funny car. Everybody's working funny car team. Everybody's working really really well together, and it's uh, it's paying out. But you you know you, you better enjoy it while while you can because you never know what's going to happen the next race. Yes. Now it's funny though. You, you know, talk about enjoying it. You say that I remember a conversation we had before the awards banquet, right? And you guys are getting ready to celebrate Doug's first championship. And you're like, I'm ready to go back to the track. Like, yeah. I want to skip this. I just want to go racing. Uh, since you are our guest, it's Chad focused here, man, that like that drive to have scored a championship. It's, but man, we don't even want to celebrate. I want to go racing. Like explain that. Um, I guess, you know, I I hate losing more than I like winning, right? Um, that that is that, that's that's what that's what keeps us going. Um, we've got a long way to go. I mean, we've 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 got uh, one championship for Doug, one for Jr. We need to get one for Sean. Uh, we need to continue to win races. We need to continue to do better for our partners, uh, better for Connie, better for Doug, just better for the whole family. And um, so, it just yeah, I just want to keep going. Yeah, no, I, I love that. It's it's almost though like, like you said, you you hate losing more than you like winning. 
it's a good attitude for this business, but it's also very tough. You're going to end up in a bad mood a lot because losing is such a big part of this game. Only one, one person gets to win each race. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, you know, obviously uh, you, you've got to take in strides, right. Um, but uh, just fortunate to, to be able to work here, work for Connie, work for Doug, uh, work for the team. Um, man, this, this place has been around for a long time and to be able to, uh, be here and, and have the opportunity to win races. Uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And so, uh, Sean Langdon, not an easy day at the races, right? Had to go through Antron, had to go through Steve Torrance, had to go through Justin Ashley, won the Gator nationals. Um, you know, what's the difference, right? Uh, Brian Hughes taking over that car, uh, you know, no disrespect to our friends who, who ran it previously, right? They're all successful people in the business, but sometimes chemistry and Alan and Brian, they're connected at the hip back to, you know, you tell me, right? The Alan Abbey days or before, um, talk about this chemistry that they have that now is the chemistry at Coletta Motorsports. Yeah. I mean, obviously Brian's worked with Alan for, you know, for 20 plus years, you know, uh, that car is, is nothing like it was last year. Everything was changed, um, right, wrong, different. Um, it it uh, it's it's working. And um, Brian uh, has got good chemistry with 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 Alan. Uh, Max Savage is 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 getting that same chemistry with with Alan. It's going to take a long time. Um, you know, we hired a a, a kid from uh, John Force Racing, um, a kid named Justin Grote, working with. Uh, Working with Brian Houston on uh, Langdon's car, we've got Mark Denner working with Max Savage on Dutch car. Again, uh, they're they're all working together, and it's it's pretty cool to watch. Max Savage, uh, one of my you know like uh, you know favorite uh, guys in the pits, right? Like just yeah. doesn't say anything. Mac yeah. does does Mac talk? Yes, he does. I've spoken with him, but just worker, just a worker, gets it done. Yeah, he's an Ohio guy, which is which that I'm from, and I mean, I, I don't think we're 30 minutes away from each other. And uh, works his butt off, uh, really, really meticulous, um, a lot like Brian. Um, and it's uh, it's it's exciting to watch uh, all that hard work pay off. So, uh, doing some research on Chad Head, right? Like, uh, you know, are you the general manager? Or are you the vice president? Right? I'm like going on there and looking, and the first thing that came up is Chad Head on the roof of a funny car driving a golf ball down Pomona. Yeah, no, I'm just man. I I work for Connie Coletta. I'm just happy to be here. Work for Coletta Motorsports, and and uh, we all we all uh, we all try to keep it together and, and work as a group. Yeah, we that was pretty fun that day. We we drove the drove the golf car golf ball off the funny car there in Pomona. Pretty nice swing, you know. The sponsorship. Hopefully, you got a couple of uh, you know drivers out of that deal. Do you yeah. ever miss? Do you miss? Uh, you know, smashing the pedal, driving the car. You had a pretty good little career. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, I started late, um, obviously. Racing the guy, racing against guys like Jr. Robert Height, Caps, uh, Hagen. Man, it, that's a it's a pretty tough crowd to to come in late. Um, but very fortunate to be able to do it. I don't, you know, there's only a few people that have gone 335 or however fast we went. Um, it was fun to do it with dad for sure. You have better perspective of what's going on. Um, but, uh, you know, I, uh, sometimes I miss it. Sometimes I don't, um, don't miss getting my butt whipped. That's for sure on the starting line. Um, but, uh, I really had a good time with the Nostalgia Funny Car Racing for sure. Um, and, and definitely had a good time with the, uh, the bigger, the big car. Uh, loved racing with Dell, you know, when he was driving and I was driving, it was fun. So, so yes and no, but I, I really enjoy what I'm doing now. Is the license still active just uh, while we're on this thread? You know, that's funny. I, uh, I think the last time I, I, I made some runs was, uh, uh, been right before 2020, uh, we were developing the new mobile one oil. And, um, I think I made eight or nine runs in a funny car cause her and Sean had to go to, um, uh, Toyota Day, right? They had a, a motor stay there, and uh, they couldn't be there. So, so I, you know, I don't know, Joe. Um, I, I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, well, another, back another another couple laps, and I sure could. I'm sure it'd be active. You'd you'd get it going again. All right. So you've been around a long time. Uh, I want to use your uh, institutional knowledge to help people understand the state of the competition and top fuel and funny car, both of the nitro categories 
as uh, now compared to the past experience you've had. You've been there through the eras of Bernstein and Selzy, of course, Tony Schumacher, the rise of Antron, all of these things, right? Um, I hear, and my assessment is like, man, it's freaking tough out there right now. I don't think it's ever been tougher, but I'd like to hear you talk a little bit about how it's different, why it's tougher, if in fact you believe that that's true. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's coming down to the driver. For sure. I mean, um, these cars are so close. Um, you know, we, we do get those days where it's throw down and, and the track is, you know, uh, 80 degrees and, and it's, it's, it, you know, it's, it's hard as you can go. Then you get those days that the 125, 130 track camp and the UVs at eight or nine. And, and it's, uh, I, I actually, I like that kind of racing better, um, because it just shows off people's talents better. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's coming down to the drivers, man. I mean, they, they, these guys, all these crew chiefs are, they're awesome. I mean, it's fun to watch. Um, and, and like I say, it's coming down to the drivers and, and I like our chances with the drivers that we have. Well, you do have two great drivers that first double, um, you know, the, 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 I think it was 17 attempts. It happened on the 18th time. JR and Sean were both elated in the media center. They came on the show. They, it's it's weird because like when Doug won the championship, I feel like his outward personality changed a little bit because now he could really enjoy like like that was burning him a little bit, you know, like deep down. It makes sense yeah. that whole not won a championship. Well, that's over. Like, hey, man, that's not no one's going to say that ever again. And the double up thing with Jr. and Sean, I kind of feel like, man, they really wanted to deliver that. And then they did. And that whatever it was, you know, fly in the ointment, if you will, it was gone. How meaningful was that moment when you guys like erased that talking point? Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, we were really, really close to doing it again in Phoenix. I mean, JR had a great run in the semifinals uh, against Austin Brock and um, I mean, was a couple inches away from, from having another opportunity at, at a double up. And so it was great. Uh, but again, um, uh, we did it. Let's, let's do it again. Um, 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 <laughs> I was on the road Sunday night, headed home back to the shop and, uh, yeah, I, I, not a lot of time to, 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 uh, to do partying or whatnot. I'm just, I'm ready to go back and get after it. No, oh, I got you. I got you. The, yeah. uh, four wide Vegas coming yep. up, right? Uh, this is the, like a four wide mini season. We go back to back four wide with a weekend between. I like that. Cause then, we kind of get it out of the way. It's a unique spectacle for everyone out there, but it still plays the points. We got the mission too fast, too tasty challenge. Your guys, John Owen and, and, and Todd told me they wanted nachos, man, nachos, a little extra motivation. It's going to be kind of different with a four wide. Give me like a little, uh, you know, four wide preview, knowing that this is still a unique spectacle that only happens twice a year. Yeah. I mean, we definitely got, um, we've got a good, good chance of, of doing well here. Jared does a great job uh, on the four wide. All of our drivers do. Um, the weather's going to be hot uh, for the first couple of days, and then it's going to get cold uh, on Sunday. But uh, obviously that could change at any minute. As far as the four wide, um, you know, it was, you know, drive, you know, when I was driving, it was tough. A um, lot going on. Um, it's definitely something different, you know, nothing, you know, it's just like racing uh, dirt at Bristol, right? It's, it's something different. Um, but Um, so the fans like it and it sells, sells sponsorships and it, and it brings, you know, uh, 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 more traction to our sport that let's, let's keep doing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you froze up a little bit. Let me knock you out and put you back in there. Uh, there you go. Now you're, now you're frozen up. Hey, there's three qualifying sessions a day. I know you were, you're, you're back. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Do you, you have me? Yeah, you do. Do you read me? Yeah. Oh, there we go. How about now? You got me. He's, he's looking at me like he's got me, baby. Chad Head, do you read? Major Tom, do you read? Come, come back through that link, Chad. Come back through that link that I gave you. He's going to come right back through the link, and that fixes everything. It's like it fixes everything. Because I want to ask him about the three qualifying sessions in a day. Uh, that's coming up at Richmond. We did it already with Pro Stock at the Arizona Nationals. Uh, let's uh, let's see what happens. But I want to know about how significant that is, like for the teams and uh, all all of that. What difference does it make 
for, let's see, try again. Pop him out a text just in case he like, thinks interviews over. Meanwhile, we got people out there. Leah says, I uh, love my WFO sticker. It's on my back window. Thank you very much. Larry says, I received an envelope with WFO stickers, patches, enclosed, handwritten address. Didn't expect it, but it's a nice touch to what you've been doing. Dude, thank you, Larry. Well, you joined the Patreon, from what I understand, and that's part of the deal. And even the people who don't want uh, stuff as being a Patreon, like some of them say, oh, don't send anything. I want to make sure that you have some stickers and patches and all your stuff to represent WFO. Uh, Spectacular is extremely polite. Four Ring Circus. Uh, I don't know. I like the fact that it's challenging out there. Blake saying hi, Chad. Rudy out there saying what's up. And uh, Chad's trying to come back through. Internet access, a little challenge. There he is. Thank yeah. you very much for trying again. I appreciate it. Sorry, Joe. We, you think we'd have better internet in Las Vegas, but we don't. So too many people. So many people enjoying yeah. the same internet is what it is. All right. The three sessions a day. I know you were very, very heavily involved with the pro superstar shootout down there in Bradenton. We've noticed, you know, some differences, some changes to social media. People, I think, are a little more active, you know, pushing a little harder. One of the big elements that I thought was cool was the three runs in one day, and now that has been adopted for Richmond. Just speak on that. Teams want it, clearly. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's just something that we can try. Um, you know, it worked. It worked in Bradenton. Obviously, we had a one run Thursday night in Bradenton, and then three runs on Friday, and it uh, it seemed to work out well. We had great weather, so that was a, that was a good thing. Um, you know, I, I um, love going to Richmond. The, the Franklins, the you know, and uh, Tyler Crosno and all those guys. It's it's a great place to go. Um, let's see what happens. Um, you know, weather dictates everything. If we can have good weather, I think we can knock it out of the park on Saturday. Three runs of, of qualifying, I think, is great for the fans. Um, I'm sure, it's better than one Friday and two Saturday. Um, you know, for the events that we can't um, have a total of four qualifying runs, and that's that's really what we where we need to be um, on a consistent basis. But, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, no, super excited. All right. And due to the uh, sketch internet, while we've got you, I just want to say congratulations and thank you for jumping on WFO and sharing a little bit with us some point in the future. Uh, you know, there's always something new, right? Like, I really want to get to the bottom of, you know it. Like, you can budget as much as you want, but there's an extra magical thing that separates success from failure and you guys have got it right now. And so that's exciting. And as you continue to unfold the layers, we want to, you know, ride along with you guys over the course of the year. So thank you for making the time. Good luck this weekend in Vegas. And thank you for going WFO. There he goes. Chad head with us here on WFO radio, Chad head, Coletta motorsports riding high right now. And they're leading the points Sean by 36 over Justin. And JR by two in funny car. And that's huge improvement over the previous years. And so let's see how it goes. I don't think funny car has ever been tougher. I don't think top fuel has ever been tougher. And I don't think pro stock has ever been tougher fans of pro stock. If you guys are out there, Greg Anderson, we're going to try to connect with Greg today. We, we were maybe not even going to have a show, but wanted to talk to Chad Wanted to talk a little Coletta Motorsports and certainly wanted to talk to Greg. Greg is out in the desert and, uh, you know, the ride from Arizona to Vegas. Not everybody like myself came back to Miami to go back to Vegas. Uh, but we're going to try to connect with Greg in a few minutes. Uh, in the meantime, your comments, put them in the comments section like Terry Sutton. I don't have a WFO sticker. Here's the deal with WFO stickers, guys. Like if you're a Patreon, I send them to you. I'm willing to send WFO radio stickers for free to anybody that just does the busy work for me, right? Like I can't put the uh, the post the, the postage stamp and fill out your address and all that stuff. But if you send a self-addressed stamped envelope, Terry, this is not for you, bud. I'll hand you a sticker when I see you. This is for everybody out there in WFO land, PowerTube TV, YouTube, on X. If you want WFO radio stickers, just send me a self-addressed stamped envelope. If you don't know what that is, you can Google it. It's real easy. It takes all the work out of my hands. And all I got to do is load up an envelope with four stickers and send it your way. And then my, you know, postman will just take it. It makes it real easy and real accessible. Castello Media slash WFO stickers, P.O. Box 848-353, Pembroke Pines, Florida, 33084. That's our P.O. Box. And I go check it every once in a while. 
and I will send you stickers. Why would I do such a thing? Because fans of the show should have some WFO stickers. Now, Terry, when it comes to racers and race teams, I think I'm maybe a little bit scarred by my father, right? Like who would, I don't know if he would put a WFO sticker on our own family car right now, right? Like stickers on cars. He's anti, it's anti, it's a religion. It's not, not going to do it. If a race team asks me for WFO stickers, I hand it to them. Yes, of course you may have WFO stickers, but I never solicit like, please run my sticker. Me and Jason Logan have been having like a fun little back and forth about this thing because he's like, I'll solicit putting stickers on Life's a Drag, of course. And um, it's pretty amazing. But the people who have asked and volunteered to run the decals on the car, it's been tremendous and it's meaningful. Um, you know, whenever Hartford rolls out there and I see the WFO radio sticker on his car, very prominently displayed. Of course, we create the hidden horsepower podcast for total seal. and We've got a marketing relationship, but so helpful to see the WFO radio logos out there and to whomever. But if you join Patreon for a year, I send you a T-shirt. If you join Patreon at all, I send you stickers. I send you a patch. I send you all the WFO stuff we have because obviously we want you representing the show. All right. We're a few minutes away from Greg Anderson. Honestly, guys, I told him to, uh, told him one 30 Eastern, uh, 12 30 Eastern. Cause that would be an hour. One 30, 12 30 Eastern time. So we got a few minutes. Can we share the show out there on X fans of pro stock? Let's build up a big audience for Greg Anderson. In the meantime, I'm going to tell you about the people who make it possible for me to go WFO like total seal piston rings. Got a lot of great podcasts. There's now a total seal YouTube channel just for Hidden Horsepower, the podcast. Those of you who want to watch Hidden Horsepower on YouTube, you've got a whole new channel. We ask you to like the channel, share the channel, uh, leave a comment, all of those things. Total Seals YouTube channel for Hidden Horsepower. You can search it, you can find it, but it's all an exercise in ring seal, letting you know about the latest, greatest technology in ring seal. And we speak with these superstar engine builders. We spoke with Keith Wilson from Wilson Manifolds. And what did he say? Consistent, Ring seal, shape of cylinder, cylinder surface, all vital. And that all comes back to Total Seal. So amazing. For your next engine, TotalSeal.com. Make them your first call, not your last call. Talking about Phillips Connect, smart trailer technology. Mr. Epler, been on board with WFO for the last year or so. Really appreciate what they do. Staying connected, smart trailer technology, sensors, brakes, lights, air temperature, air, your air system. Is it loaded? Is it not loaded all of a sudden? If you're in the transportation industry, Get connected, phillips-connect.com. FTI Performance Transmissions and Torque Converters on board. You don't have to go far. Just look in the winner's circle. You'll see FTI decals. Paul Lee, his company, The Land, Florida. They're doing the transmission for Project Pontiac, by the way. Super excited about that to get back out on the track. Got that straight cut gear set. Really excited. Heavy car. Hopefully big horsepower. At least 750 horsepower. It's going to be tremendous. And FTI putting the transmissions and torque converters together for very quick, very fast machines, including Justin Bond's Pro Mod machine. CWT Industries, this is really cool. Balance machines, right? Balance, you got to stay balanced. If it rotates, it can be balanced. Randy Neal's company, search them, cwtindustries.com, and learn about these new automated, uh, somewhat touchscreen balance machines that save you time and make you money in your machine shop. We got a lot of machine shop guys out there. I know that. A lot of machine shop guys out there. Look at your balance machine. Yes, I'm sure it works. But does it work as well and as quickly? Quickly being the active factor because it's a moneymaker for your shop. It will pay for itself. It will do a better job. And oh, by the way, yeah, uh, Project Pontiac was balanced on a CWT Industries balancer. Randy's going to join us on the show after Charlotte. We're going to have a little bit of a break before Chicago, and we're going to do some uh, information sourcing on balancing. CWTindustries.com, not just for race cars, but for Caterpillar, the big 3,500 cats, like anything. They got a machine for the size of it, which is pretty amazing, CWT Industries. Folks at Foggett got myself a can of fog it right here in the studios it's funny because this is a prop but i find myself having to run and grab the can of fog it and spray something down every once in a while either to inhibit rust or free something up but that's overkill it is a extremely high level fogging oil to protect the inside of your racing engines your valve seats your piston rings and of course your cylinder surface here's a look hopefully you can see it those of you out there on power tube um look at the rust on those piston rings how do you prevent that what can you do to prevent that well 
that is a byproduct of combustion. Oil products contain sulfur. Sulfur mixed, uh, once it's uh, combusted, when mixed with water, it creates sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid, even at the microscopic level inside your cylinder, is bad. And so at the end of the night, you pull the plugs or down the carburetor, you spray it with Foggit, and you are doing the best thing you can do to protect the inside of your engine. Foggit.com, available at Summit, available at Amazon, and available at Foggit.com, which we already told you. Bernie Speed Shop, 100,000 square feet. Bernie's buying and selling. They do frame-off restorations. They do everything at Bernie's. But if you're looking to sell your classic automobile, exotic automobile, it's about finding the right audience to buy it. Well, that's what Bernie's does. B-O-R-N-Y-Z-Z.com. Josh Hart, tell them you heard about it on WFO. If you're looking to purchase, they've got a whole fleet of them. We just saw down in Ocala, Bernie's.com. Also want to tell you about Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School. Obviously, the Dragster Adventure. You can drive a dragster. Go to FrankHawley.com. Marvin Rodax, Coffee and Grills.com. The hot sauces, the spice rubs. So many great things, including the Eclipse blend of Stampede of Speed, which is um, a lot of words. What does it mean? The Stampede of Speed blend that everybody loves so much, uh, dark roasted. That's how they do it. The Eclipse uh, version. They're all drag racing themed. They're the best coffee from around the world. 817-924-6821. RodexCoffeeandGrills.com. And then, of course, SamTech.edu, the School of Automotive Machinists and Technology. Let's see what your comments are out there. See what you've got to say while we await Greg Anderson. And we encourage you to share the show. One more note, since I'm pitching you, and thank you very much for sitting through the pitch without those sponsors. Like we're off the, we're off the air. It's as simple as that. I'm going to the lumber yard like Danny Noonan. I am getting a real job instead because of our great sponsors and the people who keep us on the air telling the stories of NHRA drag racing, but our WFO mobile app. I'm very sad because we had the first app in all of drag racing, right? We had the first app of all of drag racing, uh, 14, 15 years ago, long time, but it is going away. And so everybody that relies on the app for push notifications of when the show is on or who's going to be on the show, you're going to have to find a new method. And that new method is X and YouTube. Follow on X. I always tweet the show every single episode. If you're out there on X right now, please repost the show as Greg Anderson is getting ready to join us, hopefully. And that way you will always know who is on the show. You can always reference back the website. You can go to YouTube. But if you want the audio only podcast, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts. That's the best way to get it. We're on Amazon. We're on all of these things. And we will, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, I'm wondering, maybe it'll be better without the mobile app. One less thing out there to, uh, I don't know. We'll see. That's it. I don't have all the answers, folks. I don't have all the answers. Uh, we'll see, though. I wanted to acknowledge Sean Langdon's victory a little bit more deeply because uh, Sean, you know, the guy is an excellent driver. He's won championships in everything he's raced for the most part. Didn't get a funny car championship, but that was a limited amount of time. Top fuel, super comp, junior dragsters. And he is widely regarded amongst his peers as one of the deepest thinkers about what's going on out there. Um, you know, not quite, it's like not AI. It's just I, intelligence, drag racing intelligence. And, you know, the air, the wind, the UV rays, something we're talking about, relying on the crew chiefs. But in the end, just going up there and doing the right thing. The fact that Josh Hart left on nothing and Sean was able to hold the car there and, you know, do what he had to do to hold it there. Pretty amazing. Amazing stuff. Uh, what are the comments out there? As I think Greg Anderson is signing on. Good afternoon. Says Laura Garrett using Foggit on our three Rotax 125 racing engine and cart parts. Thank you, Gary. All right, let's get to him right away. Great. Right. What's up, GA? Where are you at? What's up, What's up, GA? Where are you at? I'm in the sand. You're in the sand. You're in the desert. Let's see it. Show us. All right. Look at this. He's on the moon. Greg Anderson. Look at that. All right, Greg. I'm guessing. That our time with you. Oh, look at this. Dune buggies. Say what? What are you doing? Oh, yeah, baby. Well, we had some carnage on day one. We lost one of them, but we're, <laughs> we're still going. All right. So I don't trust is... our internet access. What was the key to victory this past weekend? Okay. What was the key to victory? 
You know the desert, guys. The desert. Tremendous. What about four wide? Vegas four wide. Look ahead. Crazy run of sand dunes. I think it's nuts. It's crazy, but there's uh, two of them coming up in a row. Better suck it up and learn how to do it right. You guys seem to have overcome the intake manifold rules change. I don't know. We've overcome it. It's definitely a work in progress. You know, he's in the desert, guys. We're making an effort. We'll see if he tries to reconnect. I wouldn't. I would go play with the dune buggies. That's what I would do. I don't know what you would do, but I would certainly go out there in the sand. Something that's very alien to me. It looks like it'd be a lot of fun, right? I'm more of a water person being here in Miami, right? Hollywood, Fort Lauderdale area, 15 minutes from the beach here in South Florida. But that's something that has always been intriguing to me. All you desert dwellers out there, um, you know, speeding across the dunes. Speeding across the dunes looks like it will be a lot of fun. Uh, I would like to do that one of these days um, in the right circumstance. Obviously, it's, uh, you know, it's a, a dangerous game, right? You're out there on the dunes. You're, you, you know, going fast up and down. I have no experience even remotely close to that. But thank you, Greg, for making the effort from the sand dunes. That was uh, all I could ask. We knew you were out there. Try to get you on the show. Don't worry, folks. Greg Anderson going to be on WFO Radio many times during the course of the season because when he wins, he always joins us on the show, and it has been very interesting. We did a new Hear It From Heiner episode. For our Patreons, there are special shows that are just for the Patreons, the VIP Listener Club, patreon.com slash WFO Radio. There's a new Hear It From Heiner episode up, hour and a half of, uh, you know, a lot of digressions and, you know, funny stuff, and I just kind of catching up. But some deep insight into the intake manifold situation. And I will paraphrase it by saying that uh, throughout intake manifold history, there's been little things in the manifolds and, and Michael Heiner talks about some of those things, foams and, you know, baffles and, and different stuff. And now there is nothing allowed in there. Like uh, Lonnie Grimm told me like a can once it's empty, there should be nothing in there. That's what the intake manifold needs to be. And so they have had to re-engineer their entire tune-up at KB Titan Racing. And, you know, there's more to the story, obviously. And you guys can go listen to hear it from Heiner. If you're really into pro stock, you're definitely going to want to join our VIP listener club. And it's not a mass uh, appeal show. It's for the Patreons and the hardcore pro stock geeks. I think Terry Sutton qualifies as a hardcore pro stock geek. Uh, let's see what else has to say. Blake, I've got a question for you. Guys, Craig Anderson made an effort. We appreciate it. He's out having fun. But I will entertain any questions that you may have for the next few minutes or so. So put them in the chat section. Let's do it. Open phones Wednesday. Except there's no phones, but it is Wednesday. Uh, Joe, I have a question for you. I asked Monday Morning Racer this last night on the Power Hour. Who are your picks for the winners of the Las Vegas 4 Wide this weekend? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so. I know why you're asking this, Blake. It makes perfect sense. After I won the WFO Radio League on Drag Race Bracket Bonanza, now everybody is going to come to me for my picks, right? Especially now that the odds are up on Caesars and all of these things. Everybody wants to lean on me for the picks. And, uh, you know, I get it. I get it. Uh, I was very happy to win the WFO Radio League on Drag Race Bracket Bonanza. I am inviting Anybody else who feels like they have what it takes to win the league, to join the league, go to dragracebracketbonanza.com and enter the code for capital B5. Look at this guy. He's trying again for capital B5, C-O, lowercase, capital J-D-W for Drag Race Bracket Bonanza. This guy is not. He's trying again, guys. Greg Anderson is trying again. G-A, your nation. Greg, do you read me? It looks so good. Right here. 
Yeah, I just don't think we have the cell service. Does that sound like all right? We're just kicking him out. I'm going to text him. Like you're, you know, thank you, Greg. You've made the effort. Like that's exactly why I'm going to text him. Like unbelievable. This five time champ. Thanks for the effort. Except effort doesn't come out. Go have fun. There it is. Thanks for the effort. Go have fun. Guy tried to come back. That is amazing. And that's what happens on WFO radio guys. We've been doing this for over 10 years podcast now live stream on YouTube, on power tube TV, expanding out there. We encourage you guys to repost on X, share the show after the fact, the audio only, um, the racers have made this program what it is. It's just so amazing. Uh, over and over. I'm humbled. You know, this past weekend working NHRA on Fox, I really had a great weekend. I was thrilled to be able to be invited to do that. Why? Is that happening? It's happening because of WFO radio and our audience that has been with us for so long. Um, people tell me I should talk about it more when I'm out there on the mic at the NHRA. I do not shamelessly promote my own podcast because NHRA is paying me to be there to report on drag racing, not to promote my own podcast. Right. But I'm thrilled because like Jason Logan and Jason Galvin and Alan Reinhardt, they promote it. And then I promote their stuff. And, and it just feels, it feels a little better doing it that way. But you guys, you are our source of promotion. It is a total word of mouth deal with this show. I really feel like you will find out all the inside stuff in the industry of drag racing by listening to this show. Like for instance, the three qualifying sessions at Richmond. You heard about it first on WFO radio before it was announced. Um, you just have to be able to read between the lines. You got to be able to read between the lines. We might not tell you they're about to announce three qualifying sessions in one day at Richmond, and it's going to be a game changer. We might not say that because there is a, we have to respect the flow of information, but it might be a hot topic. Like, do you think this would be a good idea? And then it ends up happening. And we don't know exactly what may or may not happen, but we can attack the issues. And maybe because of what people say, people are out there in the WFO universe. I really appreciate it. And it's because of these great and wonderful sponsors. Um, I did dodge your call on the picks. Steve Torrance, Mr. Four Wide, they would love to get on the board here. Steve Torrance has seemed to excel at the Four Wide, but right now it's hard to pick against Sean Langdon. Sean Langdon is feeling it and good, positive energy over there. Brian Hughes and everybody is so happy for him. And most importantly, like all that emotional, soft uh, heart stuff, none of that really matters. The car is fast and it's consistent. Sean can handle the four wide chaos. And so I don't know if I was making picks for money, I would probably go right back with the hot hand. Two out of the last three, three out of the first four. Why not? Um, but that's not an official pick in funny car. You know, very tough, very tough. Jr. looking good, but Austin Proc, Austin Proc, going to be the first four wide race in a funny car. John force is back. Uh, you know, Ron caps, they're still sorting out a new car, new clutch discs and all of this different stuff. I don't want to say that they're kind of on a different program at the moment because they'll end up going out there and winning the race. But, this is what it's all about. Really deeply considering what each team is doing. Pro stock, man, Erica Enders at Vegas. It's hard to go against Erica at Vegas. That's that's just it. It is a four wide race, but it is hard to go up against Erica at Vegas. What's up, Britt? Britt's out there. Britt just got her super comp license. Britt is one of our WFO Patreons, and Britt has got a YouTube channel. How about that? So you can go watch Britt's YouTube channel and uh, see what's going on. I, also, I'd like to share the love with our listeners. All right, let's see. I think Stewart will have a good chance at a win this week in the four wides. He talked about how to made him feel more comfortable when driving the alcohol class. Tony Stewart got his first win four wide in alcohol dragster with his a fuel car. Maybe Tony Stewart gets his first win in Vegas in a top fuel car. I had a good conversation with Tony and He's still loving it, but he got a real dose of what drag racing really is all about, as in pain, 
by getting bounced first round in the first two races. He told me flat out, he goes, you know, starting at 10 05, loading up at, uh, start, excuse me, starting at 10 o'clock and loading up at 10 05 is not fun. We got to go rounds and that's part of it. Uh, I could see Tony Stewart getting the job done out there this weekend, but I can make that argument for like 10 other guys. And that's the thing. The stars have to align. Let's see. Derek says, use a sat phone for Greg. Let him, let him go out there and have fun. He made the effort. We'll talk to him after his next win. And Dragster Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. It's all about the effort. You know, Lama, a little something for the effort. Let's see. Who else? No seniors, just old masters. Montana Carding out there. Got my tickets for Charlotte Four Wide. Can't wait. Charlotte four wide is always great. It's funny because the spring race in Charlotte is always like packed and the fall race is less packed And why, you know, football has started. There's a lot of reasons going on. Um, everybody's making their last ditch before the winter. Um, but man, four wide in Charlotte. I know some people don't like four wide, but we've explained this hundreds of times. It's two races at the beginning of the year. It's a spectacle that attracts new fans. And then once we get them there, we explain that traditional drag racing is too wide and that they should come see us for a two wide race. The race in the spring in Vegas used to be empty, genuinely empty. And now it is full and sometimes a near sellout. That proves it. Different crowds come to the four wide, a crowd of people that just want to see a crazy spectacle. But like one of our listeners said yesterday, it's cars going down the racetrack at 330 miles per hour. And it's all your friends and your favorite drivers. They're going two wide. They're going four wide. You know, what's not to like, maybe not preferred, but still likable. Good to see Greg Anderson and John force back in the winter circle. No seniors in drag racing. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's not, but there are, I mentioned it yesterday. Somebody took issue with me on the YouTube channel. And I think this is what they were talking about. I said, and, and believe, that first of all, here we go. Here we go. Age, wisdom, and experience is undervalued in our civilization. I'm talking about the world or our world, or, you know, I don't want to single out America. I just think youth, beauty, youth, is where most people focus their attention on youth products like razors and all that stuff in the grocery store. They want to get you early because once they got you, chances are you're going to stick with the same razor for the rest of your life, the same shaving cream. This is marketing. You know, I don't know if it's one oh one, but it's two oh one. They'll tell you that they want to get to you early because you, if you went over the young people, you've got, let's, let's call it 40 years of product loyalty. So everybody spends so much time working, worrying about the, the young folks. And I agree with that. Like, we got to do that. It's a big part of drag racing. And we got the Jasmine Salinas's and the Travis Shoemakes and the Austin Prox. And we've got the Krista Baldwins and all of these people that we we have successfully made a segue to youth in drag racing. And it's a good thing. Um, you know, there's some downside to it. There's some, there's some downside to it, too. How many 20... Two year olds can afford a nitro car, right? It's like it's very different. It's a very different sport. But at the same time, only in drag racing, only in drag racing, can that young 22 year old driver race against a 74 year old John Force and get spanked. Wisdom, experience, age, treachery, whatever you want to call it. Some people disagree with me that we should also tell that story that we should honor and respect the older folks who are in drag racing from the very beginning. You want to earn a 22 year old as a customer, but we're basically saying when they get to be 65, we don't care about them anymore. Like their money's not good. Like we don't want them to like it anymore. We're going to cut them off when you, cause you're too old. Soylent Green, man. Soylent Green. 
And if you don't know, it's a, it's a movie reference. It's a it's an old root. I too, I, you know, I get this experience because I'm becoming old. I am becoming old. So it's like, oh, let's not kill the old people. Let's respect the old people for a second. Because if we're lucky, we get to be old. But you don't get to be John Force or Greg Anderson, right? How are they doing it? Greg Anderson, 009 against Erica, loses. 002 against Erica, loses. But he's bringing it right now. And he went, he goes out there and finally powered through and won the Arizona Nationals. John Force, so many people. Oh, John Four, I don't know what he's going to be able to do. These old people, they're all there, they're 74, 75. They're like, oh, worry. They're doing it. Mick Jagger is out there on stage. He's rocking out. They're doing it. Age is different now than it was when we were kids. When we were kids, if you were 50, you're old. Sorry. Now, if you're 50, you're me. And maybe that's old. I think it also had a lot to do with the smoking. Oh, smoking. I think it really ages people. Just saying. That, like, that's my anecdotal guess that smoking ages people. But I'm not a doctor. Blake, like my picks. I didn't pick pros. No, I said Erica at uh, Factory X this weekend, guys, as I understand it. We should all appreciate there are no boundaries in drag racing. Absolutely. Old, young, black, white, male, female. Not, there's, there's no boundaries in drag racing. You know, I got really uh, fired up about the NCAA women's tournament ratings. I believe that all of those people are potential drag racing fans that could root for Krista Baldwin, that could root for Jasmine Salinas, that could root for Brittany Force, that could root for Leah. They could root for Alexis. They could root for Erica. I got to name everybody. We got to continue to tell the story. I don't know why people say that I was off base with it. We need to tell the story. I do understand that some people just want to tell the story about people that are racers. But I think we got to grow. See you in a couple weeks at ZMAX. Can't wait to smell the nitro. The Pro Stock class is wide open. Really, pretty much. Pro Stock classes, uh, all classes are wide open with the exception of Pro Stock motorcycles. It's been a great year. It's been a tough year, says Jim McDaniel. It's been a tough year for us just getting a little routine in. I'm hoping for a great weather weekend. P.S. It's very exciting this year. How about Kenny Delco mixing it up in there? Kenny Delco, fast. I threw down in the 58, the first round. Kenny Delco. Yeah, KD, bring it. Got that Frank Iaconio power. True, but the grandstands at Charlotte are so huge. So anyway, like one of my pet projects, and I'll leave you with this. Answer in the chat section on YouTube. YouTube question of the day. Which place had more people? Pomona or Arizona? Pomona had bigger grandstands. I want to see what your answer is. WFO, guys. Appreciate it.